Hey everybody, Eddie J on crypto. Hope you had a great day. We've got a few things to talk about. First one, Russia, Apple, Cardano, gold, and everything in between. Normally it's a, it's a quiet day, right? You know, there's not, everybody thinks there's not much going on. So they're having talks about a whole bunch of other topics. You know, to me, there's always something going on in the crypto space. Um, there's a debate going on right now about how there's such a separation between NFTs and cryptocurrencies. So I'm just wondering how that's going to play out and how that's going to collide. Separate conversation. We'll have that another time. Russia. For a while now, I've been telling you, you know, the Bank of Russia said, no, 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 we're not going to do this whole crypto thing. And then Putin came out and said, yes, the hell you are. Well, guess what? They are. And they're trying to make sure that Bitcoin is seen as a real, um, not fiat, but real currency in Russia by February 18th. Now you take a step back and you kind of go, wow, what the heck? A couple of things that come along with that. If you do a transaction over $8,000, it must be registered. Okay, fine. But then if you do a transaction, it must be done through a government exchange, most likely a bank, which means the banks are going to exact their fees and take their money because where's that all that bank money go to? Now, why are they doing this? Well, you know, there's, there's a thing I kept telling you about. If the U.S. and E.U., um, cut them off from the SWIFT network, you know, the world's global uh, communications network where you can transfer money real fast between, between governments, that's going to be a problem for them. That's going to be a major problem for them. So what's the fastest way to move money? Cryptocurrency. So here's your cryptocurrency, and they can move it around. That's great. So they're preparing for what I think is the inevitable, and that's the invasion of Ukraine. Can't put my finger on it. I'm not a global guy. Don't know everything about politics, but that's what I see going on right now. Now, with all of that going on, of course they're going to do something with crypto. That's how they're going to move their money. They've got over $215 billion as a collective society in Russia that's holding, you know, 16.5 trillion rubles. So you sit there and you kind of go, yeah, that's what they're going to do. No problem. Something else that they're doing is they're saying, well, China kicked all the miners out and a lot of other countries, including the U.S., which is the number one mining place right now for crypto mining. And they're telling the miners, hey, come over here. We've got plenty of electricity. Now, I've always wondered since since China did what it did, did they withhold some of, you know, as a fee, some of the some of the coins that were mined before they kicked them out? And if I'm a miner, I don't know that I'm going to go for that. I don't know that I want to actually have my coin snatched in any way. It takes a lot to actually, you know, mine things. So I'm, I'm wondering if, well, that's a thing, right? If, if I put my, if I move my mining operations, I've moved them once. If I move my mining operations to Russia, could the same thing happen to me? And because they're money hungry, could I get, could I lose my coin. I don't know. But if I'm a miner, I'm not, by the way, I'm not a miner. I don't, I don't mine cryptocurrency. But if I was, I'd be thinking about that really, really hard before I move my operations again. So if I'm already someplace that accepts crypto mining and I'm not having any troubles, I'm probably not going to move unless I have to. And move to Russia? That's kind of scary. And by the way, keep an eye out on Russia because their inflation rates are through the roof, right? So they've got a lot of reason to do what they're doing with regard to Ukraine because it changes the direction and changes, you know, the conversation that's going on. The old art of, you know, the old art of, you know, misdirection. Anyway, that's just a thought I'd share because that could have an effect on the crypto space. And I'm always thinking about what could have an effect, whether it be large or small. Is there a macro or micro event you know, that's happening elsewhere because the world is small. So to me, everything is local, right? I mean, Russia's around the corner. With technology the way it is now, Russia's around the corner. This, things are right there. Um, Apple. 
Apple's making a move. So remember I told you about Block and how Block is going to get into doing some kind of a um, decentralized fiat on-ramp? Well, Block is already in the point of sale space. Well, guess who else is entering the point of sale space? Apple. So if Apple's entering the point of sale space, what they're, how they're doing it is I'm going to have my iPhone and I'm going to introduce tap to pay. So as a merchant, I can literally just hold my phone out, tap, get paid for my products or services, and keep it moving. And given Apple's ecosystem, that could be a very big deal, and that could get them into the space and cause major problems for everybody else. But I think that space is heating up. I think there are opportunities in that space, whether from a stock perspective or from a cr cryptocurrency perspective, because Apple said... Of course we were gonna work with Stripe. We're already working with them and we'll work with credit cards and debit cards and other digital wallets. Yeah, they actually said that, but they did not define other digital wallets. So that makes you stop and go, well, what do you mean? Do you, do you mean, I mean, a lot of people are speculating, well, of course they mean, you know, cryptocurrency. Most likely, right? That would make sense, right? But it could also mean that we're going to work with, you know, central banks and their digital wallets. The United States is working on one. They released a paper. Um, India, just a lot, of, a lot of countries are, you know, working on their digital wallets. So don't know what they mean by digital wallets. So that's going to be something to play out. I mean, I'm not going to speculate. I'm just not. But I could look at what are the choices, what are the chance for those choices, you know, kind of like a decision tree analysis and look to see, well, what could happen and how can I make money from any direction that they go? Most likely, most likely cryptocurrency. And if Apple gets into the cryptocurrency space, like I said, they have a killer ecosystem, a killer ecosystem. You don't need any additional, any additional equipment because they have, in the United States, that is, they have a very strong space, you know, with their Apple ecosystem, the iPhones and iPads, that, that's a very big deal. That's a very, 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 very big deal. So we can see how that would work. Something else I wanted to touch on, Cardano. Cardano hit a major milestone, 30 million transactions. Within the first eight days, first eight days of February, they've done, on average, over 110 transactions Per day. Let that wash over you. That means that the transactions on their network has picked up and they said, well, when we make when we make certain changes, we're gonna see, you know, more transactions on our, you know, on our blockchain. And guess what? Lo and behold, they've got more transactions on their blockchain. So that's gonna be a very big deal. And I'm telling people, strap in, because I think Cardano has a lot more to do, and they have a lot more going on, and we'll see that over the course of 2022, okay? So just pay attention to that. Keep, keep an eye out on what's going on in that space, because I really do think that Cardano is going to continue to make moves this year. You know, just like I believe Shib, you know, Shiba Inu is going to make moves this year as well. I think Shiba Inu, Gallo, and I, and I told you, you know, a few, a few uh, videos ago, I've got about... I've got nine, my top nine coins that I think are going to be strong this year, and I gave you a bonus too. So go check out that video. Now, this last one is a little annoying. A lot of people are talking about how, you know, gold, you know, gold sucks. Gold isn't doing anything compared to Bitcoin. Gold is nothing because, you know, it's really not, a, you know, a defense against inflation and blah, 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 blah. And right now, and for the past 10 years, that's been true. However, the argument that these people are using is that, you know, Bitcoin is finite. Yes, it is. But as any kid that went to school, you know, gold is also finite, hence precious metal. Just saying. So here's a precious metal We've already mined 80% of that precious metal. The U.S. Geological Society has said we've only got about 53 metric tons left of gold in the ground that can be mined. Assuming you can find it and assuming it's easy to get to, you can still mine that much gold. And, there's, and based on how much gold we mine per year, which is about 2,500 to 3,000 metric tons per year, We've got, we've got less than 18 years left of mining for gold. So as we get closer to that point, you're going to sit there and you're going to start seeing people go, 
holy crap, there's no more gold left. Go, 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 gold. So what's going to wind up happening? Gold prices will shoot up as people start to realize gold too is finite. Okay? So Bitcoin's finite, gold is finite. At some point, gold is going to become so expensive that it could become a hedge against inflation. I'm not saying it's now, but as more and more people start to realize, wow, you know, there's not a lot of gold left. All the metals, there's, there's a finite amount of metal, of different kinds of metal in the world. Excuse me, period. Right? So you start to realize that and you kind of go, well, Bitcoin is a great, you know, is a great, you know, bet against inflation, blah, blah, blah. And that is true. I do believe that. However, we need to stop talking about how gold is not finite. And you could always go back and mine gold. You can't. You can't. Gold is incredibly expensive now. People are walking around with wedding rings not made of gold, not made of metal. So pay attention to that. Stop, you know, just take a step back, understand what's going on, and just kind of say, well, you know, at some point, yeah, gold is going to become more expensive, more expensive. Give it two years. Gold is, I, gold is going to shoot up and people, just like it shot up, you know, to the prices that it's at now, it's going to shoot up again, and people are going to sit there and go, holy crap. The price per ounce is ridiculous. So pay attention to what's going on and start thinking about what you can do. And that was Stitch, if you heard that bark. So you start to think about, you know, why am I in, you know, in Bitcoin? I'm in Bitcoin because a lot of people are holding Bitcoin, and they're holding Bitcoin because Bitcoin is finite. So those people holding Bitcoin, those are the people that are going to be playing with Bitcoin. So pay attention. Because at any point in time, they can just go, okay, I'm going to dump my stuff. I'm going to dump my Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin price goes like that. They're not. They're holding it. Why are they holding it? Michael Saylor says he's never going to sell his Bitcoin. That doesn't mean he's never going to use it. It just means he's never going to sell it. And at some point, will they sell their Bitcoin? Who knows? Who knows? Will they put it back in circulation? Who knows? But any one of those whales that do that would definitely be able to affect the price of Bitcoin. Hence, you have altcoins. Right? So there are whales. You have whales. The, 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 the most held coin in the Ethereum space, Shiba Inu. But Shiba Inu has a ridiculous number of coins, hence why they're burning coins all the time and you know, introducing burnt, you know, coin burn parties and all that stuff because they want the price to go up and they've got a lot of zeros to burn. But you have other coins that can do well compared to Bitcoin. Like if you look at Bitcoin and it's rise up, Bitcoin might lead the pack in terms of starting to rise, but other coins are rising far more than Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin rises, let's say, you know, 20%. Other coins, because of that rise, are going to going to rise 30, 40, 50, 60%. So you have to pay attention to who's, you know, what coins are rising and moving with Bitcoin and what those what those coins are doing and all that other good stuff. Again, do your research. It is about the research. It really, truly is. Okay? Let's get to the numbers. Let's go see what's going on right now. Doo, 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 doo. So, looking at my trusty tool, um, I try to take a look at, you know, top winners and losers. And if you look at this, here are your winners. I mean, here are your losers. From 10, and it drops, to, it drops down to 1 real fast, right? And here are your winners. Again, not paying attention to Safe Moon, something weird. Not, not paying attention to that. I don't know a lot of these a lot of these coins, but just look at where they are. Right? Obviously, winners are beating losers right now. Something I paid attention to, which is why I have this tool, is because I wanted to see, well, here's an opportunity. To me, here's an opportunity to buy Gala. I told you before I believe in Gala. I like what they're doing, how they're doing it, right? And you see a lot of other coins just moving sideways. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're moving like, you know, less than 5% in the cryptocurrency space, that's kind of a little bit of profit taking, but really you're still, side, you're still kind of sideways, right? Wait, waiting for the next big pop. That's, that's the way I look at it. So, I mean, even mana, mana's at 2%. Really? Um, yeah, it's kind of maintaining a little bit. Because I told you, I think, I think the way it's going to happen is we're going to go up, we're going to come down a little bit, we're going to go up, we're going to come down a little bit. Just stair-stepping up the same way we stair-step down. 
So that's what I think is going to happen. And, you know, to me, this would be an opportunity to snatch up some gala because sooner or later, gala, gala will be over here, just like it was a couple of days ago. So I'm paying attention to, to what's going on and how that's happening. On this particular chart, the other day, I only had the symbols. I've added the names just so I can be, you know, become more familiar with, you know, with the names and what's going on over there. Cadena, didn't see that coming, up 7.11%. 7, 7 These are good moves, very good moves. All right, let's go to the fear and greed index. Yesterday, I think it was 48. We moved from 45 to 48. And look at this. Right now, we're at 50. 50. If you recall, a few days ago, not too long ago, we were all the way down at 11. A few days ago, we were down at 2023. And now we're at 50. So that tells you we're starting to move. We're really starting to move. So you start to pay attention to, you know, how we're moving, what's going on, and all that other good stuff. CPI numbers come out tomorrow, right? Um, consumer price index. So that, that can move the market a little bit. But also, don't forget, we still have the Super Bowl going out this weekend. And FTX is running, a, you know, running some, kind of a, some kind of a contest where as time goes on during the Super Bowl, they're going to pay out that kind of Bitcoin. So you have to do something to register. So go to FTX. I think it's on Twitter. FTX underscore official is their, is their handle. Go there. Look at what you have to do and see if you can win. See if you can win something. Hey, if it's free money, if it's free, it's for me. Just saying. But there's your, there's your fear and greed index. And I think that's why you're seeing winners beating losers right now. And if you look at the cryptocurrency space, things are looking green. That's nice. I mean, there they were red. There were a lot of reds earlier, so it's nice to see mostly mostly green. This is profit taking right here for XRP because we know yesterday it was at eighty one. So they, you know, there there was a move, and I think there's profit taking going on. Terra Luna, same thing. Um, Solana, I mean, that's not really down, right? 068 percent. That's moving sideways. That's basically you know zero. So this is this is telling you that things are moving in the direction that we really want it to move to. Um, so just pay attention to what's going on. I was doing some research on SHIB. Um, but look at this. $44.3 thousand dollars for Bitcoin. $3.2 thousand dollars for Ethereum. Things are moving in the right direction. Um, today, we're going to remove Tether from off the list. Why? Because Tether is by Bitfinex. And Bitfinex... Because of their hack in 2016, where they lost that all the, all those billions of dollars, because of that hack, um, they introduced Leo, the Leo coin, to give away to everybody to kind of make up for it. Nobody wants a freaking Leo coin; they wanted, you know, Bitcoin. But that's all right. But I was using, I used Tether like a lot. I used to use it a lot, and until, until I realized that holy moly, I shouldn't be using this coin because it's tied to Bitfinex. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to wind up moving over to um, USDC, which is which is where I'm looking at right now, because it's a, it's a more of a trustworthy coin, you know, by a more trustworthy group. So I'm moving over to USDC. I think it's uh, Terra Luna. Who is it? We can actually look that up. Da -da 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 Ethereum protocol, yada, yada, yada. I'll find out next time, you know, who it's, you know, who actually is behind it. But this is what I'm paying attention to. So Goodbye, you know, to Tether. Hello, USDC. Um, but as you look across the as you look across the space, you can see, you know, things are moving up, maybe they're moving up or a little sideways. Shiba Inu, that's a nice price, up five and a quarter, not bad. Past seven days, up fifty eight percent, really sweet, loving that, because you know, in our portfolio, which you know we haven't looked at in a while, we actually hold, you know, hold that. Uh, let's see. So when you look at that, you have here SHIB, and you're looking at how much you, how much value you have with 70 million coin. Not bad, because it didn't cost us that much to get it. I think I think the initial number that we used was 500 for this. So that's pretty good. Um. We're still looking for other things to kind of pick up. I mean, things are up, but they're not up enough, right? So when you come down here and look at our portfolio, we're still down a lot. We're down 11% on, on VeChain. 
Um, we had, you know, I, th I think at some point we were up, but we're down a lot on V Chain. We're down on uh, Phantom. Um, we've picked up in other places, but you know, we're starting to move in the right direction because I'm I'm not I'm not going to add to this portfolio anytime soon because I'm I'm waiting for it to get to a point where we start playing on the way up. Like people 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 kind of have an idea how to play on the way down, right? Sell, sell, sell. Dollar cost averaging can, can be your friend as long as you're doing the research in all of the coins that you're holding and you can understand what those coins are doing because they might be contrarian to the, to the market space. So if you, maybe they, you know, entered into another DeFi, you know, DeFi app onto the, onto the blockchain or whatever it is, whatever news there was, that might lead to a pop for that particular one and not move along with everybody else. You also want to pay attention to how, how one is moving against the other, because if you're holding a lot of this one, you might sell it to get the other. So you make money on that exchange itself, sort of like foreign exchange, you know, Forex, and then move back back and forth between your coins to see what you can do. That's why you pay attention to what the coins are paired with. Let's go back over here and I can show you what I mean. So if you look at, um, let's say, Ethereum, you'll be able to see, well, where can you trade Ethereum and what are they, you know, what is it paired against? What exchange and how you can move, move with it? These are very simple things and things that you can do research on to figure out how you can make money and add to your portfolio. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Hope you had a great time. Again, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, and make sure you hit your notifications because today I didn't get to this video until nine o'clock at night. It's been a long day, uh, had a lot to do. Um, so get the hit the notification bell so you know when I'm dro dropping a video. And don't forget to check out our NFTs. Um, we're Sabar7 um, over on OpenSea. We've got this puppy right here. Um, so check it out. Hope you have a great night. Bye-bye.